Okay, so we're back, and I starting out by just kind of showing a before and after of you know what I did, what I started with, and then what I ended up with. So, um, by the way, I'm using the compare module here in Lightroom, but I'm just going to click here so you guys can see the difference. So notice up here that uh, one, you know, I've got some stray hairs poking out and, you know, this little guy right here and sometimes my hair just doesn't want to cooperate. Um, but uh, this stuff here, I took, uh, I took care of it in Photoshop because um, Portrait Pro doesn't quite do the job when it comes to like a lot of stray hairs, especially big ones like what we've got over here. You can use the retouching tool in Portrait Pro, but I find that it's a little bit easier just to do it in Photoshop. But if you guys can tell over here, the uh, you know I've got a lot of uh, freckles from spending a lot of time outdoors during the summer. I've got you know the typical forehead wrinkles, a little bit of eye bags. God, I can't believe I'm talking about myself this way. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know how it goes after uh, working so hard, spending too much time in front of the computer. Um, your eyes get a little tired. You kind of get those little dark circles. Also, um, let's see what else. So I also reduced the uh, shine. And also, if you notice, uh, some of the redness in my cheeks and in my nose, I also uh, kind of brought that, you know, took that out as well. Kind of brightened the eyes just a tad. And then let's see what else. I didn't do a whole lot of face sculpting. I've got really big cheeks and I'm really self-conscious about them. Uh, so sometimes I'll go in if I'm like clenching my jaw during a picture. This is actually something that I tell my clients when I'm doing their pictures is, you know, don't clench the jaw, just kind of smile from the lips. And that way uh, the face is all nice and relaxed. The muscles are relaxed and it kind of elongates the face. So anyways, moving on. Uh, and I think the only other thing that I took care of was if you look over here, there's a little crazy thread. So I took that out in Photoshop as well. So I'm going to do my best to kind of go back through and remember what I did in Portrait Pro. And if not, we'll just kind of wing it and you can see what I would do with it anyways. So let's see here. I am just going to unselect. There we go. Whoops. All right. So, and I've already got a crop too, because originally it wasn't cropped. Uh, it was a more full frame. So we're going to go to edit in Portrait Pro. And, oh, yeah, I promised you guys that I would let you know what, uh, what the settings were. So looking over here, it was ISO 64 at 45 millimeter. It was at F8 at 1 60th of a second. And if you notice, the histogram over here is uh, nice and, you know, in the, you know, like a good bell curve. It's right in the middle. Let's see what it looked like before. Okay, so it was a little bit darker. If you see over here, it shifted quite a bit to the, uh, well, <clears throat> it shifted a little bit to the right, which is going to be the darker area. But then, um, let's see, I kind of adjusted the dark tones. Let's see. So over here in the, uh, in the curve section, what I do sometimes, let's see, I may have gone back and readjusted it, but keep your eye over here while I just walk through what I did in my history uh, thing. So uh, shadows went down. That might be a little too much, which is what I kind of felt like. Sometimes what I'll do just to kind of even out the skin tones, but still have that contrast that we want is I'll do minus 15 over here on the shadows. Uh, so the darker end of the spectrum and then the dark tones, I'll raise them up to about 15. So I'll do plus 15 on the dark tones and then minus 15 in the shadows. And like I said, if, uh, if you watch my face here, let me go back to the beginning. So if you notice here, I'm going to zoom in one more time. So watch the redness and the contrast and the overall skin tones of my face. God, I still can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> so I'm going to click back up here and just watch what happens. Eventually, there it goes. So if you notice, it kind of helped with the redness a little bit. It did brighten up uh, the, uh, the lighter side of my face. So some of the shine came out, but I know I'm going to take care of it in Portrait Pro later. Um, but if you can tell, uh, it did kind of even out everything so it's not so um 
so it's not so contrasty, making the colors in the face really punchy. Um, and then I kind of went through and changed the white balance a little bit, but I found that the way I shot it was totally fine. In fact, uh, let me go back and take a look real quick what white balance I think I used. I think it was uh, daylight. I think that's the one I almost always use, no matter if I'm outdoors or indoors under tungsten or use flash or whatever. But let's see if it'll show it. Do, do, do. Maybe. I don't see it. But I can tell you right now, I, I know for a fact that um, I, uh, I always use the daylight white balance setting because it's right in the middle. It's what cameras are calibrated for, what sen camera sensors are calibrated for. So if you start in the middle from there, it's much easier to adjust later than, let's say, accidentally leaving it in tungsten white balance mode where you know it creates that super blue filter to, co to color correct for the overhead tungsten lights. It's really hard to move your white balance adjustments back to where they should be because it's just like way underexposed a shot or overexposing it it's much better if you can you know get it right in the middle so yeah so that's why I use the daylight and then um, let's see synchronized settings oh that's because I changed the crop I went back to the uh, one that I've touched up anyways I just wanted to make sure the crop looked the same so that's what I did in Lightroom not a whole lot but the curve the tone curve is kind of a thing uh, also uh, I do have a preset for headshots, a develop preset, and what that does is, well, before I jump into that, notice over here, nothing, nothing is adjusted because when I shoot, I try my best to have that histogram, you know, right in the middle. Of course, this time around, it was a little bit harder because I'm not behind the camera, I'm in front of the camera, which is where we're all terrified to be. <laughs> I know I talk too much. I say that too often too. Uh, and then the other thing that I know is it doesn't have this tone curve automatically applied. I do that per image because sometimes I need it, sometimes I don't. Uh, detail. I've talked about this before in previous videos. I just take all these sliders and put them right in the middle. The reason why I do that is because when I import them into... Um, I mean, even though I shot at f8, which is a really, really sharp aperture, um, when I import them into Portrait Pro, it makes it much easier for that software to find the edges of the face and the facial features if it's a really, really sharp picture. Uh, let's see what else. Lens corrections. I always make sure that my lens corrections are on. Uh, setup is set to auto, and it just automatically detects uh, which lens that I'm using, which, by the way, is the 24 to 70 f2.8. Uh, transform, no, didn't need that. Effects, nothing. Camera calibration, I just leave it at Adobe Standard. So, okay, I think um, what I'm gonna do is leave this one here because the, I've got a feeling that <clears throat> because of how long it took me yesterday, because I'm so picky <laughs> about how my headshot would turn out, that I took a little bit longer than, say, what I would normally do for a client. Because uh, you know everybody's self-conscious, especially about them. You know when it comes to how they look. So I'm going to move that into uh, the next video. And depending on how much you know, how much time, uh, how long it takes us, we may go ahead and uh, include the Photoshop part of it, where I you know remove the hairs and all that other stuff uh, in that one too. We'll just we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try and keep these close to you know 10 minute segments or something like that. So. With that being said, uh, first of all, thank you guys for watching. I know that it takes time out of your day, which is one of the reasons why you know I want to keep these you know short and informative. The uh, the other thing you can do too is if you've got questions, please, please, please put them in the comments below. I always try to answer them you know as often as I can. Uh, if it takes a little while for me to answer it, don't think I'm ignoring you. It just means that. I'm working, <laughs> but I will get back to you. For those of you guys that do understand it and you see somebody else leave a question in the comments, feel free to jump in and you know give your two, uh, your two cents. Or if you have other ways, uh, other things that you do in Lightroom that you prefer to use, you know, share it with the rest of us because like I said in the previous video, uh, what I do, I don't feel like it's the best way or that it's the only way to do it. Uh, it's just the way that I prefer to do it. It's the 
the part that's easiest for me it gives me the results that i like you know you guys might have different preferences with how your photos turn out so this is just what i like to do for you know studio headshots and sometimes it can apply to outdoor headshots too um, and let me see what else. So if you want to be on the up and up and see more videos that are coming out, like the next one, uh, the retouching part of it, uh, make sure to subscribe. And there's also that little bell icon that you can click on and that'll notify you the next time that video rolls out. And um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I'm really loving, you know, just sharing what I know here on YouTube. I've been doing it for a while and um, it's just my opportunity to kind of pass along you know what i've learned but um i love you guys uh your participation and your insight and all that other stuff so let's just keep sharing and keep moving forward thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video